Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh with EduCryptoCation. Today I'm going to go over, um, again, what uh, a non-fungible token is. Everyone's wondering what NFTs are, what the big hype is. Um, today I'm going to go over a little bit about that. Just going to explain to you the basics. This is out of the NFT Bible, actually. <laughs> um, what is a non-fungible token? Non-fungible assets are just normal stuff. Fungible assets are the odd ones out. Most discussions about non-fungible tokens begin by introducing the idea of fungibility, which is defined as able to replace or be replaced by another identical item. We think that overcomplicates things. To get a better sense of what might constitute a non-fungible non asset, just think about most of the stuff you own. The chair you're sitting in, your phone, your laptop, anything you can go and sell on eBay, all of these fall under the category of non-fungible non things. It turns out that fungible assets are the odd ones out. A currency is a classic example of a fungible asset. $5 is always $5, no matter the serial number on the specific $5 bill or whether it's $5 sitting in your bank account. The ability to replace a $5 bill with another $5 bill or five ones for that matter is what makes currency fungible. Note that fung fungibility is relative. It's it really only applies when comparing multiple things. Consider business class, e economy class, and first class flight tickets. Each ticket is roughly fungible within its class, but you couldn't fairly swap a first class ticket for a business class ticket, even the chair you're sitting in is roughly fungible with a chair of the same model, unless you've developed a special attachment to your particular chair. Interesting, interesting, interesting fungibility can also be subjective. Back, uh, back to the flight ticket example. A person that cares about sitting in a window seat versus aisle seat might not consider to economy class tickets interchangeable. Similar, similarly, a penny might be worth one cent, but may be worth much more to a coin collector. We'll see that some of these nuances become important when representing these items on blockchains. Now we're going to get into blockchain-based non-fungible tokens. Just as we had digital currencies, think airline points and game currencies. Before currencies emerged, we've had none <coughs> we've had non-fungible digital assets since the down of the internet. Domain names, even tickets, in-game items, even handles on social networks like Twitter or Facebook. All are all are non-fungible as digital assets. They just vary in their tradability, liquidity, and interoper inoperability. And many of them are incredibly valuable. Epic Games made $2.4 in revenue selling costumes in their free-to-play game Fortnite in 2018 alone. Wow. The market for event tickets is projected to reach $88 billion in 2025, and the market for domain names continues to see solid growth. We have tons of digital stuff. We've never really owned it. So it's clear, we already have tons of digital stuff, but to what extent do we own these digital things? If digital ownership only means that an item belongs to you and not someone else, then you own them in some sense. But if, the, but if digital ownership is more like ownership in the physical world, the freedom to hold and transfer indefinitely, this doesn't always seem to be the case with digital assets. Rather, you own these assets in specific context, which may or may not make moving them around easy. Try to sell a Fortnite skin on eBay and you'll discover the difficulty of moving digital assets from one person to another. This is where blockchain comes in. Blockchains provide a coordination layer for digital assets, giving users ownership and management permission. Blockchain adds several unique properties to non-fungible assets that change the user and developer relationship with these assets. <clears throat> So there you go. That's the basics of NFTs and 
the difference between fungible and non-fungible tokens. Um, if you go into my other videos, I do have um, a video on how to um, how to download the MetaMask wallet. Which is one is the first step in being able to trade and um, sell buy NFTs. So if you go look at my other videos, or I will actually put the video at the end of this one if you want to look at it, so you can see how to um, download the MetaMask wallet. Um, and I will have plenty of future videos more about NFT specifics. Um, if you guys have any requests, go ahead and let me know, and I'll go ahead and make. Um, that content for you. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. If you'll please like my video and subscribe to my channel, I could use all the help I can get. And thanks guys for watching. Have a great day.